This video is dedicated to Christian Roberts. Christian, thank you. Merin of Clan Nell Toth versus Atraxa Praetor's Voice. Uh, we are on the draw, so I'm going to keep that one. Hope that we get into a land for the Cultivate. They decide to shock in a breeding pool so that they can get down the Avacyn's Pilgrim already on two of the colours they need for Atraxa. And I wonder if it's worth us getting down... Oh, well, I was going to say. I wonder if it's worth us getting down crop rotation into Ancient Tomb, but... I think now that we've got a third land, we're alright to just hold up the Windswept Heath, probably get out a tap land with that at the end of the turn. Might still go for an Ancient Tomb if we're worried about outramping our opponent. Serum Visions from them before they make a land, so hopefully they don't have a land to make yet. There's every chance that the top three cards doesn't have a land in it. Okay, they do have one in Blooming Marsh. And deciding to swing in with Avacyn's Pilgrim. Uh, so it's not too likely that they'll have anything to do with that Blooming Marsh. I think I'd still like... I think I'd still like to go for Cultivate next turn, to be honest. I don't like that our opponent's a little bit ahead of us. So let's drop a Forest from this. And we'll go Crop Rotation, getting rid of the Forest. And that will take us into Ancient Tomb. If I'd made my mind up sooner on that, we could have had Spawning Pit out already. But I hadn't decided what I wanted to do yet with regards to that. Let's go for the Cultivate. We'll get both a Swamp and a Forest into play. And then that can be our turn. They get down Jace the Mind Sculptor and go straight in for a Fate Seal with that. And yeah, I had a feeling that our opponent had a, a decently built deck here. This looks like Super Friends to me, which is exactly why I'm, yeah, I'm glad now that I went in for the Cultivate when I did. We'll go Woodland Cemetery. And I wonder if it's worth setting up Lightning Greaves now. Uh, we could go Lightning Greaves now and get down... The spawning pit as well? Yeah, I think I think that's alright. Because I'm thinking of going for Lightning Greaves onto the Grave Titan next turn. And then if our opponent blocks the Grave Titan with their commander, uh, we'll be able to get it back with Recurring Nightmare thanks to the zombie tokens. And there is a Traxer. And they're going for a Fate Seal onto us again. Uh, still a few turns away from getting the Limit Break off with that, but even if we do hit them with the uh, Grave Titan. Yeah, they're not going to be able to block with this now that they've swung in. Um, yeah, even if we do hit them with Grave Titan, they have a Jace in play still. And then they've got it in play for even longer, thanks to the Proliferate. Okay, Altar of Dementia is another sack outlet for us. We are definitely going in for the Grave Titan. And obviously that comes in with a couple of zombies. We're going to get a couple more once we swing in. And like I said, we've got Recurring Nightmare for next turn to bring this back with haste, thanks to the Greaves. Yeah, the Lightning Greaves is going to be imperative this game. So we'll swing in at Jace. Yeah, definitely swinging in at Jace. And we'll see if they want to block or not. They do decide to block. We're probably getting pretty close to getting rid of Jace next turn, because we got quite a few zombies there. Um... The Super Friends decks tend to run a lot of board wipes, so it might be that they just wipe the board here. Nope, they're going for their Atraxa again, deciding to bounce one of our zombies, and then that'll go back up to 8 loyalty. We're going to be able to deal some damage to Jace next turn, because we're going to be able to swing in with these zombies. Grave Titan has been really good for us this game so far. Alright, and Song of the Dryads is excellent as well. So in that case, we'll take some more life. We'll go Song of the Dryads onto Atraxa. And that'll allow us to get through to Jace. Because we are going for the Recurring Nightmare. Obviously target the Grave Titan, get rid of a zombie. That comes in, we put the Greaves onto the Grave Titan. And then we will swing in a zombie and the Grave Titan at Jace. And then the other zombie can go in for two damage onto our opponent. And now, even if our opponent does board wipe, we've got a lot of sack fodder with the spawning pit. And that will allow us to make a bunch of tokens, and that gives us sack fodder for the recurring nightmare. So definitely showing off why recurring nightmare is banned in multiplayer commander. 
Way too powerful a card in decks like this. Okay, our opponent not going for anything else. They got down a tap land. Uh, yeah, it smells like Cyclonic Rift to me. Anyway, let's... We'll probably just go straight into combat. And if our opponent wants to go for Cyclonic Rift, then they obviously can. Might just sacrifice the Grave Titan again, actually, so that we can get it out for cheaper with the Recurring Nightmare. Argument to be made for us going for Merin before we swing in, because if they've got Rift, they'll probably go for it right now. Okay, blocking the Grave Titan with Avacyn's Pilgrim. Maybe they don't have Rift, after all. Going to take hit for 12 here if they don't go in for it. All right, so we knock them down to 17. Let's go for our commander. And now they are going to cast something. That is a remand. Yeah, don't mind that. At least we don't have to pay the tax. Let's go for Altar of Dementia. It might be that we prefer the self mill to the getting tokens out. At least we've got a choice this way. But it might be that we're just riding Grave Titan into victory this game. No Cyclonic Rift, apparently. Okay, Stoneforge Mystic, so maybe not Super Friends then. Might be just a four color value build. There are some really good equipments that you can use with a Traxxer. The Black Blade Reforged and stuff like that. They went for Sword of Feast and Famine, which the discard isn't necessarily that much for us to worry about in a Merin deck. And we've got Reclamation Sage in hand anyway. They go for the Sword of Feast and Famine. And equip that. Uh, I think we might have them here anyway. We've got 8 there, which is 16. They block the Grave Titan. If we go Rex Sage onto the sword and then give the Rex Sage haste, we can just go wide on them, can't we? So, yeah, I think that's a nice double whammy with the Reclamation Sage. Use it as removal and a means of us winning this one, hopefully. We get down a Swamp, which I think is the difference between us getting down our Merin and not this turn. It is, so we'll go Rex Sage. Definitely made use of the Ancient Tomb this game. Even though it's cost us a lot of life, it's accelerated us nicely. So take protection from black off of there. And our opponent sees it. We now have enough damage on the board in order to go wide on them. Would have gone for Merin there. Didn't see any of Merin there, unfortunately. Just rode Grave Titan into victory. But yeah, um, but given any other creature, we wouldn't have been able to dodge the... Jace the Mind Sculptor Limit Break, I don't think. Although we did get into Song of the Dryads, so we could have put that on the Jace. So maybe we would have won either way, but Grave Titan and Lightning Greaves doing a hell of a lot of work for us there. Hopefully you all enjoyed this brief revisit to Merin of Clan Nel Toth. Be sure to leave it a like and comment if you did. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.